All right, great to see everybody. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I'm Casey Drogi. Um, you're here for our special talk, which is a combo of PGH Photo Fair and Small Mall. Small Mall has been doing tiny talks all summer and PGH Photo Fair has just sort of pivoted because we had to cancel the fair this year. We were um, trying to figure out some new ways to bring programming. So we decided to take two programs that are Casey Drogi cultural production programs and kind of bring them together. So PGH Voter Fair is working with Small Mall to do a series of tiny talks that really focus on local photographers. Normally for Photo Fair, we only do um, speaker series that actually bring in like curators or collectors. We don't usually have artists. So this is a nice opportunity for us to expand on what we usually do. So I'm going to hand it over to Cor, and then you're going to hear from Honey, and you'll hear a little conversation. And at the end, you'll be able to ask questions. You guys are always welcome to throw questions into the chat, or you can um, later unmute yourself and ask a question. All right, Cor. I'll unmute you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm like, hello. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kareen Jasmine. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm the concept facilitator. Hi, Steph. I'm the concept facilitator for a small mall, in case you weren't aware. So, do the events and programming in this space. Um, like Casey said, we're going to have the chat open. So you can type in questions as they come up. You can type in questions at the very end. If you're feeling a little bit shy and you don't want to, I'll be happy to read your question for you. Um, but we ask again, as we all are a community, we're trying to see each other's faces during these trying times that you can, if you're able to um, share your video, um, have your video going on and all your audios will be muted. So we wanna see all your cute faces, um, if you can. I'll tell you a bit about Small Mall and then we'll pass it off to our lovely artist for tonight, Honey, and then she'll give a presentation and then her and I will talk a bit. So for those of you who don't know, we have um, an open call open right now, an open call open. We have our open call live right now. So if you're interested in having your work submitted in our space, if you are an artist, that is available to you. Um, we do, we run a consignment contract, a three month consignment contract, 50-50 split. Um, we are located in Lawrenceville. We have a second location in Wilkinsburg. Currently due to COVID right now, we're only open on the weekends. So we are Friday through Sunday, 11 a.m. through 4 p.m. But we have um, an online store that's obviously open 24 seven. So your work would be carried in shop and online. So reach out if you have any questions about that, but you can apply on our website and you can also check out local artists work on our website. We'll have Honey's work in the shop, prints in the shop as well and online. If you are not feeling in-person visits, that is A-OK. -okay. And we have hand sanitizer as soon as you walk in the door at Small Mall and we have a big shield, we're all wearing masks, so we're being super safe. So if you wanna stop by in Lawrenceville, 5300 or in Upper Lawrenceville if you haven't yet been. 10% um, of our proceeds this month are going to go to Trans Uniting, a trans organization, and Black Young and Uneducated, the youth organization in Pittsburgh. So if you shop with us, we're going to forward our proceeds just like we did 10%, um, just like we did the previous month to a couple of other local organizations. And we do have a couple more tiny talks that are coming up. So we have and Jamie and Jai on July 23rd, and we have a sooner, a one's coming sooner next Friday, um, next Saturday, I think, uh, July 18th is Ali Karsh, a tiny talk collage workshop. And then we have Thomas Waters on July 30th. And I think that Thomas is in this chat I saw. So hello to you. I think I saw your face pop in. But yeah, if we'll talk about any, um, any other questions at the end, but I think that we're going to hand it off. And honey, are you unmuted? Okay, can we unmute? Cool. Okay, boom. I am unmuted. Hello, everyone. Oh, this is intimidating. <laughs> so many little boxes of faces. Hi, y'all. Um, hello. Thank you, Casey and Cor, for having me. Uh, this is very atypical way to have an artist talk, but this is 2020. Um, what should I do? Should I intro myself? What, what would you like to do? You want to just jump right into it? Do you want to, you know? <laughs> um, um, 
Yeah, let's, we could just get right into it. Um, I'm going to show y'all a little bit of the work I've done. Some of it, if you're familiar with me, you might be familiar with it. I'm also going to preview some work that hasn't actually been seen ever until now. Um, I'm going to go over a bunch of little projects. Hopefully, I don't talk forever. What time is it? 8.10. Okay. I'm going to try and do this in like 15 minutes. <laughs> so... Let's jump right into it. And if y'all have questions about anything, just put it in the chat. Cause I really like want y'all to like talk to me when I'm done so I can like see your faces. Cause I've only seen like the same eight people for five months. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. I'm also not good with Zoom. I'm like an older millennial, so. <laughs> I, have, I have your bio here that I can share while you're getting ready. Yes, do that, please. Okay, gotcha. So, Sarah Honey Youngin is an award-winning visual artist primarily documenting and exalting Black womanhood and queer communities through portraiture and video. Framing her muses as her co-curators, she often shoots on location across the country in personal intimate spaces of the subject's choosing. Honey received an Advancing Black Arts in Pittsburgh grant in 2016 to execute American Woman, a portrait and interview series documenting um, the Black American woman and was named the most influential, one of the most influential African Americans of 2017 by The Root, Who's Next in Art in 2018 by The Incline, and one of the 12 people to meet in Pittsburgh in 2018 by the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Currently, Honey owns and operates a creative agency, Supreme Clientele, is a founding and executive board member of Carnegie Museum of Arts, Carnegie Art Associates, and produces DJ produces and DJs cultural events via the artist collective Most Beautifulness, formerly known as Darkness is Spreading. Good job. Gotcha. That's such a professional sounding bio. So proud of <laughs> really great. Thank you. So I'm going to preface this with saying I'm a cusser, so I'm going to try not to say bad words, but it might slip out my bad. It's, and it's after eight and I'm drinking wine, so I don't know what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> Also, I'm gonna try and keep this kind of casual. You know, I don't wanna be all stuffy with this. So I didn't really rehearse what I was gonna say. And let's see how it goes. I'm gonna share my screen. Oh crap, wait, hold on. How did I do that? Zoom, desktop one, share. Did it work? It did. Oh snap, look at that, okay. <laughs> So, boom, that's me a couple different hair colors ago, but that is me indeed. Um, I'm going to start talking a little bit about American Woman, which uh, Core mentioned. I started American Woman in 2016. It's a portrait interview series documenting Black women in America. Um, I've been to seven different cities in the United States um, to shoot this project. Let's see if I can name them without looking. Pittsburgh, obviously, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Atlanta, New Orleans, and Washington, DC. I think I got it all. Um, this first slide, of course, if you are familiar with this phenomenal, brilliant woman, this is Tarana Burke, the founder of the Me Too movement. She's actually a friend of mine from the Bronx. Um, I actually shot these photos in 2017, right before the Me Too movement really exploded. Um, so it was lovely to be able to walk around our neighborhood in, in Harlem, which is where she lives. And I actually lived across the street from her um, and not be interrupted, because that is not something we could do now, because Mama is very famous at this point. Um, her photos were basically emulating Aubrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's. She wanted to do like a Black Hood Girl version of that. Um, Tarana told me when she actually emailed me to be a part of this project that she doesn't consider herself to be traditionally beautiful. And that is something that a lot of Black women have said to me. So it's something that I grew up feeling. Um, I think it's a little easier now to be a little Black girl in the world, but 
um, back in like the 80s or even the 70s because Toronto's a little bit older than me. It was just not this many representations of Black womanhood in the media or magazines or magazine covers. So it was very like important for her to kind of do a play on Breakfast at Tiffany's because she said Aubrey Hepburn is like this epitome of beauty. And so this was our take on that. She also wanted to announce that that Black and Mild was <laughs> never lit. <laughs> I don't know why people really like had a, a really, they were really upset about the black and mild. I do not know why. Anyway, we went into a diner called Jimbo's to shoot these pictures. Now the thing about American Woman is all of the women in the project, and I believe it's 63 at last count, they chose what they wear, where the photo shoot took place, how they wanted to be represented, and that was very important. That's why I consider them to be the co-curators of this project. I don't consider American Woman to just be my work because we were very much partnered on all of these photo shoots. There's also video, but because I'm talking about my photography work today, I'm just going to focus on the portraits. This, of course, is Liana Manise. A lot of people know her. She's a fucking goddess. Um, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, on the left, that is Dr. Imani Walker. I shot her in Los Angeles, California. She's actually on Married to Medicine, LA, which also didn't happen um, until after I shot her. So I feel like I'd be making celebs out of people. I don't know. Um, <laughs> in the middle, that is Charlene Carruthers. Uh, shot her in Chicago, Illinois at the end of 2016. She is the author of a book called Unapologetic. It's basically a black feminist manifesto. It's brilliant. On the right, that is Queen Reese, Cherise Harrison Nelson. I shot her in New Orleans. She is the founder of the Mardi Gras Indian Hall of Fame. So when I went to New Orleans, it was, I consider New Orleans, it's one, it's my favorite American city. It was very important for me to ever and they get exploited a lot so I literally had to audition <laughs> to shoot this woman like she put me through the whole entire ringer we had we talked on the phone maybe like five hours before she would even allow me to meet her so I, it was a big honor to shoot her um this is Denisio Truitt I shot her in New Orleans as well on the left, that's Ra Curry. She's a brilliant artist in New Orleans. The middle is Danny B. Shot her in Atlanta in her house. About eight months after we shot this, her entire house was destroyed by a hurricane. So that's obviously sad as hell. But she, I, I was just very grateful that we could capture like her in her home before such a disaster struck. Um, on the right, that is Morgan Bryant. She was in Atlanta. I actually emailed her the night before I left for Atlanta, because I really wanted um, more queer representation in Atlanta specifically. A lot of the women in this project are queer. I'm queer, so it's very important for me to depict like intersectional Black womanhood in this project. She emailed me back the next day. Like I literally had no idea she was, found her on Instagram, emailed her, and I was in her house the next night when I arrived in Atlanta. Um, so this, uh, so that's the end of American Woman. If you want to see any more American Woman stuff, we'll talk about it at the end where you can find that project. Actually, it's going to be a full length documentary because I interviewed all of those women on tape as well. So although this is, I'm concentrating on the portraits, it's a huge multimedia project and I'm very, very proud of it. Um, so this, um, is Chrissy. Uh, she is a trans woman. We actually went on a little getaway a few weeks ago to an Airbnb. And these next photos I'm going to show y'all, I call the Black Rest Gallery. The reason I think it's important to depict Black people at rest, at leisure, having a good time, no worries, carefree, particularly right now, is because I wanted to present like, not even a juxtaposition, because it's not that, like we as black people, we are all things. But I wanted to present a bit of a respite because I'm also photographing protests. I'm gonna show you all a few of those photos in a few minutes. Um, Chrissy actually posted this on Instagram the other day, um, but none of these other ones have been seen yet, I don't believe so. 
this is another one. Honestly, I don't know if there's any photographers that are watching right now. Like shooting in water is such a cheat code. <laughs> like none, none of this is um, filtered or anything. This is literally straight out of my camera. All of those beautiful lens flares. That was just the sun and water and melanin. Um, so I can't wait to actually put these photos up somewhere. I do think that one or both of these portraits are going to be available at Small Mall starting tomorrow. I haven't decided which one of these I'm going to print out. I don't know. They're both so bomb. Uh, a third one of Chrissy at rest. This is uh, Timothy Vota, a non-binary, beautiful friend of mine that resides here in Pittsburgh, PA. I actually did put this one on my Instagram, so I lied a little bit. Also, Timothy, yes, work, period. <laughs> um, and again, this is just in the midst of complete and total unrest. We all felt a little guilty at first for getting on a plane and leaving. We also were like, why are we getting on a plane? That's like really dumb. <laughs> but we quarantined ourselves. We didn't leave this Airbnb the entire time. We got like Instacart. We got... I don't know if y'all know, there's an app in California and they will just like bring weed to your door. Mind blown, could not believe it. It's fucking glorious. <laughs> Another one of Tim in the pool. Um, this is Tressa and Kennedy. Some of y'all might be familiar with them, especially Tressa. She's one of my best friends, DJ Aesthetics. Uh, Tressa, Tressa, Tressa with her gorgeous ass self. Now getting into my protest photos, um, this is Brittany Murray. She is an organizer. Um, I've been photographing a lot of protests, uh, particularly the ones that are organized by Black queer people. Um, I think that, so I have an ongoing sort of beef with the media sending white photographers to cover black protests. I know that's like an unpopular opinion in some way because it should be just important that these movements are getting coverage. But I think that except for a few exceptions, I find white photographers in spaces like this to be extremely disruptive, actually. The fight to get the best shot and so I actually don't photograph the protests I go to when I don't know the organizers. I have to be invited to do this because it's about more than just getting the dope shot. And this is a dope shot, love it, but it wasn't something that I felt comfortable doing without invitation. Because to be honest, photographers are very, very disruptive at protests, even the black ones sometimes. And following the photographer who's always, you know, out up front trying to see the crowd coming can actually be very dangerous as has been pointed out at a few protests. So I try to make myself as sparse as possible, get the shot, get out of the way. And none of these were for any publication. These were purely for my friends who were um, organizing these actions. Uh, this is probably my favorite photo yet that I've taken at a protest because even though it's in the midst of unrest and we were angry and we were screaming and we were hot it's a moment of respite for Brittany like she's in it in the moment like you can see even with the mask on the expression on her face and it, it makes me emotional because black women are at the forefront of so many of these of these actions and I think that um, that needs to be more recognized. So I'm just going to flip through a few of these that I've taken. This, um, these last three I showed you were actually from Juneteenth. So that was a lit day. <laughs> um, they actually had two pinatas. One was a pinata of a cop car. The other said cops and clan go hand in hand. And they beat the pinata off a tree and burned it in the street. I was... I was here for it. <laughs> Not literal, like, you know, calm down. <laughs> this was from the Pittsburgh Action for Black Trans Lives um, on June 18th. I do believe I've been to a few of them, so I might be getting these dates a little bit mixed up. Toy Slaughter, who is one of the marshals of these um, actions. Thomas Hudson, extremely powerful. If y'all don't know who Thomas Hudson is, I need you to very much get familiar. Um, pronouns they, them. The, one of the most extraordinary, powerful people in this city, honestly. 
another one of Thomas, Chrissy again at the Trans March. Um, this little diamond right here. So I, I try not to actually take photos of children, particularly when their faces are identifiable. So I had to get permission to even take, like I won't even take the photo, um, but that's why they're actually looking at me because I was hesitant and they were okay with it. This is actually, I think like my second most liked Instagram photo of all time at this point. Um, I think just because it is extremely powerful. Um, the kids in this movement are amazing. Uh, Generation Z, all for them, love them. Uh, there's a Vogue competition, period. <laughs> and this one was actually just about a week ago, uh, Toy Again. Um, there was actually a collection that happened at this protest for a black mother that was there. So like these, if y'all see where I'm going with this, like these are the moments I capture. I don't need to capture everything. I'm mainly more so focusing on people and, and moments and trying to share the emotion of the moment with whoever couldn't be there and is looking through these photos. It's almost like a story. I consider a lot of my work to be documentary work as well for that reason. And that is all for my presentation. I'm going to do a little walkthrough of my, how do I do this? Oh Lord, I'm gonna do a little walkthrough of my portfolio for y'all real quick because one of the projects I believe me and CORE are going to talk about is on my portfolio right now. So Worship a Queer God, I've been doing it for a couple years now and it, it is what it says, I'll read it for you. <laughs> Worship a Queer God is an ongoing portrait series that explores gender nonconformity and androgyny in queer individuals. Um, this is Tim again. I always photograph my friends. I honestly always go back to my friends. They're always my, my best <laughs> subjects. They're most comfortable with me. Um, but again, all of these photos, I just said, hey, bring whatever you want to express yourself. I, I, some, some of my work is highly, highly curated. I'll act, I've actually got funding to buy wardrobe and everything and do styling. I have styled before, but when I do series like American Woman and Worship a Queer God, it's very important that people come as they want to be presented. Um, this is Bree's Youngblood and her fantastic ass. This is actually one of my favorite photos from that photo series. I was really like honored that she even trusted me enough to do this. Oh God, I can't get to the X. Oh, how do I move? Oh, boom. Ow. Okay. <laughs> Oh God, I'm actually really good on computers, y'all, I swear. Chrissy again. Um, so yeah, this is very much still in progress. This is actually phase one of this project. Um, the phase two of this project is, I, I want to tell y'all, but I can't yet because I'm pursuing a grant for it. But basically it will expand upon the actual theory of worship um, and altars and ritual as it pertains to um, queer and trans people particularly.